Hey, good morning, everyone. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Todd Nock. I'm a professional comic book artist, and we're here to do some art. It's uh, May 7th, 2020, in the middle of this COVID-19 stay-at-home season, and we've been working on this Iron Man sketch cover. So hopefully you've joined me for the previous two, day, two days of art live streams. On Tuesday, we did all the pencil uh, artwork here. Then yesterday, Wednesday, we did the inked art, and now today we're going to do the color art. So um, I'm gonna use Copic sketch markers, and I'll call out the Copic codes like I always do. Um, and uh, ju just in case you might be using Copic markers as well. If you don't have Copic markers and you're, you're drawing Iron Man or you're drawing whatever it is you're drawing right now, use whatever tools you have available. Colored pencils, crayons, watercolors, any other brand of marker, totally fine. Main thing is just about putting some color into our illustration. And um, hopefully we can have some fun. Hopefully I can respond to some of your questions and comments while I uh, draw and instruct. So um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm looking forward to uh, finishing up this piece today. So I'm so glad you could join me. Let's flip the camera around. Let's get to coloring. All right, just a little clip into the rig. Adjust to the light and we're good to go. All right, so Iron Man is mostly, especially in this classic armor, the Mach, Mark V armor, is mostly uh, yellows and reds. So we're gonna start with the yellows first right now, I think. And I'm gonna start with my mid-range um, yellow, which is a Y13, Copic sketch marker here. I'm going to keep in mind the light source. So I'm going to have, he's kind of tilted here. We've kind of got a, what's called a Dutch angle. So it's, or it's kind of angled here. And so the light is going to be kind of coming. He's like in his lab so, or his armory. So there's going to be kind of light coming from all around. So most of the light is going to be hitting on the outsides of him here. So we're going to have some really bright highlights. So, uh, so I'm going to kind of start on the inside of his forehead here. And I'm just going to kind of imagine where some shines might be. How they might fall on the angles of his face. Or face plate, I should say. I'm going to leave this outer part here more white for a more drastic highlight. So just sculpting in my initial color here. And we've got this little chest portal here. So I'm kind of creating a horizon. I'll have an even lighter shade of yellow coming up in here and maybe some other lighter shade in there for highlight and reflected light. And then we'll put a darker kind of horizon flipping through there. Just a little yellow inside those bolts and then his arms and legs have the yellow. Just so just leaving that outer perimeter that I inked, that was my guideline knowing, well, I knew that when I was gonna to come to color, I was gonna leave that white and open for uh, some really bright highlight. And then more color deeper on the inside, leaving this same little thing, a white part here as a reflected light. So when I was doing my inks, I was thinking about colors as well. We'll do the same with this arm here. Leaving a little white on the inside of the arm here, or inside the muscles, as a kind of more direct highlight. More color in the armpit there, because less light's getting to it. And then bring on down to the forearm here. And then keeping in mind that white trim highlight that's going to run all the way through, the way through here as the light reflects throughout his armory. And then we'll do the same treatment for the legs. Leaving a white highlight on the center of that quad there because the light's hitting right there. Leaving that part open. More color through here because we're deeper on the inside of the leg, but still leaving that part open 
for that reflected light. Tips for keeping the yellow from smudging uh, in the black. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, Copic markers rarely smudge. That's why I like them. They, you know, they're a higher end marker. They're a bit more expensive. So I can't speak to other brands of markers, but because I don't really use other brands of markers because I've invested my time and resources into investing into getting Copic markers. So I can't speak to other brands, but it's rare for it to smudge. It's not to say it's impossible because it has smudged and you know, sometimes I've had to deal with that. Worst case scenario is I have to scrap the drawing and start over. Um, but sometimes you're able to kind of find a way to, to work around that smudge if it's not too, too bad, sometimes with shading and whatnot. Um, so uh, this has had 24 hours, the ink lines have had 24 hours to dry. So, so far, as you see, I'm not getting any smudging, smudging just yet. Sometimes I make sure, now with Copic markers, even though you see the kind of the, the, the gray in the tip there, it doesn't really affect the color because Copic markers are just that way, but sometimes it can. And I'll have a little scratch sheet of paper, like here, scra scratch board, and then I'll just kind of clean out the tip if I notice there might be a little bit of uh, transfer in there, so. So those are just a couple of my tips on how to deal with possible smudging. And that goes for any color, really. Now I'm gonna come in with some Y21. It's a little darker shade of, of yellow. I'm gonna to start to add some darker sections to his faceplate. Keeping in mind the planes and angles of the face as a guide to how I might want to render the color. You can work dark to light or light to dark. Right now I'm working mid-range to dark right now because I wanted some hard contrast lines. If I started dark and then went in with lighter colors, it would blur it in a really nice, beautiful way. But with Iron Man, I wanted harder cuts. Harder cuts uh, in his color here to reflect kind of that harder edged, um, more technical side. I still want some blurring and some, and some nice gradation and shade and fade, but, um, but not too much, or at least not right now. I might change my mind as I go. So adding dark right through the center there to create kind of a horizon. Now here on the inner side of the arm to kind of sculpt it, because the light's hitting from here, so it's gonna get darker in these recesses of his arm. So anywhere that is further away from the light is kind of a general rule of thumb for uh, where to put your darker colors and or shadows. I'll come down and do this for the legs. Am I going to do a background? Yes, I do have plans on doing a background element here for Iron Man. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more color-based, but I have some ideas of what I want to do, and I'm very excited to share with you all some of, the, some of the tricks I plan to do for the background. Because I've definitely been thinking about that. I had that in mind when I started putting this pose together of what I wanted to do for a background. So... Once we get Iron Man all colored up, we'll move to the background and we're gonna, we're gonna detail out the background some. So as you can see, I'm leaving this white here and it gives it a nice big bright highlight 
all the way around them. A little darker underneath this uh, disc, darker towards the inside of the thigh area because it's further away from the light. With that general rule of thumb, you shouldn't have too, too much difficulty in, in shading your characters. Now I'm going to come in with some very, very light yellow, a Y00. Going to finish rendering out this portal here. So I want a lighter yellow towards the top. In fact, we'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see the contrast here. Regular yellow, the darker yellow, then that lighter yellow. And then the same lighter yellow here through the bottom creates a fade. And now we have this nice portal here. Actually, I want to bring in a little bit more of that mid-range yellow, that Y13 again. Just a beef beef up that yellow contrast. Okay. I'm going to put some of this much lighter yellow through the arms, the Y00. Kind of around this highlight that kind of runs through his legs here. Just kind of make a gradation to a very light yellow to a very bright white. But my main highlight is the outer ridge. And then some here on the face. Now this white highlight here on the sides of the head are really going to you're going to see the contrast once I start dropping in the reds, which will start now. We'll pull back just a, a bit. Um, so I'm going to start mid-range. I'm going to start with a R27, one of my favorite shades of red for my superhero illustrations. And as you can see, I have this kind of line here to separate the top of the head. I'm going to keep that white highlight there at the top of the head. Still always thinking of my angles and shapes of the head, like the forehead, top of the head, sides of the head, etc. Going to put a little lighter shade of red in there a little bit later. So I'm leaving some open parts to uh, make a gradation from dark to light or mid-range to lighter, I should say. So we have a lot of red going on here now because of so much of his armor here is, is red. So like with the bolt here, just keeping a little white there on the trim so that it can have a nice 3D effect. Red all the way through there because the light isn't quite hitting it. Even though this would glow, we kind of make a, and so you'd think, well, there'd be a highlight in there. It's like, yes, technically, but we're also kind of, we get to play with reality and kind of bend the rules a little bit so um so i put a bit more a bit of red in there to really show the the depth of the the portal sometimes we play by the rules sometimes we get to break the rules it's just kind of trial and error and experimenting in what, what works and what doesn't work. And that's why we learn from each illustration that we do and apply what we learn to the next one. So 
I'm going to come out with some lighter shades of red through here in a little bit. I'm going to just keep sculpting out his torso. Just kind of following along all the different muscle shapes that I have done in the line work is my guide for my colors. Always thinking about light source and shape. Now, I've done this a bajillion times over the course of my life. I've practiced this over and over and over again. So a lot of this is just kind of muscle memory. No pun really truly intended. It's just I have the muscle memory when I'm for drawing and rendering my character's muscles. It's like I've done this so many times, my hands and brain and eyes know kind of what I want to do. Sometimes I still get challenged. It's like, ooh, how do I want to approach that? How do I want to do that? But some of it is, is second nature. So you, you want to practice to where so much of it becomes second nature so that when you do encounter a challenge, you can focus more on that challenge because all the other stuff, you're a bit more you're so much more practiced with, you don't really have to worry about every single little aspect of the character because you, you know how you want to approach your shines, your highlights, your shadow of areas that you've done so many times before. How do you know how to do the shapes of where the highlights are? Um, great question. Yes, it's uh, well. One, I've you know I've studied my anatomy, my figure work. Like I know the shapes of the fingers, the kind of boxes, quote unquote boxes or rectangles, and how they bend. And then I think about the light and where would the light hit. And that's where I know where my highlight is. And then I know on the opposite side would be the shadow. So it's like, and I think of that for every element, shape, 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 shape. Each section, each little section is a different shape. And so I think of it that way. And then I think, what sh if the light's hitting that shape, where would the color be? And how does the color and shadow and light wrap around that character or that element? like his forearm here. So a lot of it is study and a lot of it is practice uh, from my experience. And just repetition, trial and error, you experiment, or at least I like to experiment and see what works and what didn't work. So I'm, you know, I'll do an illustration, it's like, okay, I like this, that, mm, next time I might not do that again. Um, but it's good to have done it so I know kind of what it, what it, how it turned out and what I can do differently. So, so there's a lot to study, a lot to learn, but it kind of happens bit by bit. So, you know, in, in, if you've taken any like art class in school, you might've had to have rendered a, a, a ball on a, on a, on a pedestal and you had to like shade in the shape of the ball and uh, you know you have the, the shadow and, and you kind of really make it look spherical. That's the same mentality with this here, what I'm doing here. But some of these balls are more rectangular shape or you know they're oblong shape, but it's all light, shadow, reflected light. I just repeat that process over and over and over again. So I, I use in my mind and my imagination, I think about where will the light be coming from? How would the light be hitting on this this figure, this character, and each element that I'm working with here. And I go bit by bit by bit by bit. Hopefully that helps.
Okay, so that's my first round of red. Now I'm going to lighten up to a new red, an R24. It's a lighter, a slightly lighter shade of red. And all those areas I left open. I'm going to come in and fill in with more red. I'm going to kind of eat up a little bit more of that white space. Now some I'm going to leave the highlight that's going to run all the way around him. Some parts are going to get a little more red, like through here his chin would overlap, so we'd have a little more of a shadow. Oh, you like it with the big wide open areas? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, sometimes you know you can, in the process, you discover, hey, this kind of looks kind of cool. I might just leave it that way. Absolutely. Now, in this regard, I'm <laughs> not going to leave it that way because um, that was not my original intention. But it's definitely something to catalog. It's like, ooh, I want to do an illustration where I leave a big chunks of white open. Totally, totally legit. That's that's kind of the discovery of trial and error. You know, it's like I tried something and I learned something that I really like and I want to utilize in future illustrations. My wife will come in and she'll see me working on something. And she goes, oh, that looks really cool that you just, you know, like you just said, like that big open white area. She might come in and say the exact same thing. And she'll say, suggest, could you do an illustration where you just, just have minimal color and big white areas? And I was like, yes, my love, I will consider that. I'll try to make that happen soon. Would she actually say something like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. She's come in and see me working on something and she'll say, is this finished or, or, or are you going to add more to it? Because I really like, I like this. So just a little bit more red here. So most of my highlight is left at the outer, as I have mentioned before, and continue to repeat for those who might just have tuned in, the white around, all the way going around the perimeter of, of Iron Man here is my greatest source of uh, highlight. Leaving some bits right in, in the center here for some highlights on the inside of him as well. And I color, color over my previous shade of red for more saturation. So this lighter shade of red reacting with that darker shade of red just really pumps up the, the value. And for this hand over here, just kind of through the center parts of his hand. And fingers, leaving that white perimeter. So you see like leaving that white right there, you have the red, the white, and the yellow, so it gives some pop.
Okay. So next up is uh, I want to add some some grays here to his shadow to sh to like start shading him. So I'm going to start with some cool gray too for the yellow parts. And dropping in this cool gray will help give the the yellows a more golden feel. You can also use warm grays as well. So still continuing to think about the angles of the face and then the angles of the muscles here coming up soon. And then move into his arms and legs. Since we know where the light source is, we know that the, the shadows will be on the opposite side of whatever element or object we're working on. Where is the light not gonna hit? Deep inside that under part of the arm. Now there's some reflected light bouncing off the wall over to here, but um, the main source of light is coming from above. Gonna render out that horizon line a little more. Really creates some delineation there. Really gives that a nice rounded feel. What did I use for reference and am I using it while coloring? Uh, this is 100% from my imagination. So there's no reference. This is, this is straight out of my imagination. I grew up with this, this version of the Iron Man armor as a kid. This is the first armor I saw Iron Man in. And so I've, I've seen it, I've drawn it a number of times. So, um, so I was very confident in how to draw this from memory. Um, so this is not a recreation of any, of any pose. This is, this is a pose I came up with on the fly. In fact, if you watch the penciling video, you'll see this was my third attempt. I, I started one pose, didn't like it, erased, started another one. Didn't like it, erased, and then started this pose. So this is 100% my imagination. My lighting here is from my imagination as well. I do use reference at times, depending on what I need to draw, absolutely. Reference is critical. You know, I've had to draw a certain building, I've had to draw like a tank or uh, some specific animal. Uh, things I'm not used to drawing, then yeah, I pull up Reference a dentist office, a a computer screen of a you know a certain maker model, you know things things like that. Definitely, definitely want reference one hundred percent. But drawing Iron Man here, lighting him, I've done it so many times. Um, just going straight off of imagination. Now with some cool gray three, a little darker shade of gray, just for some the furthest parts of his uh, armor, like way up in that armpit. It's hard for the light to get up in there, so we're gonna make that really dark. A little bit over into here, you can see with these cuts, it's giving a lot of sh form and, and shape to Iron Man. We'll be tackling the yellow, uh, red area here pretty soon. So I consider the parts that are furthest away from the light and also what overlaps something else, like this disc overlapping his thigh, a little shadow under there, and it starts to create depth. Oh, and I want to put a little of this cool gray three in his mask or his faceplate as well. Maybe like right up underneath his eye, eye ridge. 
the browge. A little bit under there, under the chin. Ooh, maybe a little bit here in the portal. Just a tiny thin line, tiny thin dot, just to give more contrast. Now I'm gonna go darker with a cool gray four and start adding some shadows in the reds, like underneath his chin. Underneath this arm. Underneath the, sh on the other side of the shoulder guard thing, it's gonna really overlap. So I consider that shape, maybe underneath this bolt. This bolt is casting a little bit of a shadow. Undersides of his pectoral muscles to start to create that shape. I did it with the black and I'm kind of adding more of that through there, through, the, um, through adding the gray. Underneath the collarbone. Maybe a little bit here in the forehead, that black fading to gray, fading to red. Kind of round things out a little bit more. And then through the muscles here, my black signifies shadow, so I can Use that as a guideline to add some grays near the blacks to create a, a transition, a fade, from black to grayish red to red. So these grays over this red creates a nice dark grayish red, which is nice for the shadow. So he's starting to take even more shape. A little bit underneath the that portal there. Inside that, that disc right there. Much like the chest portal here, the disc here, we're trying to capture that roundedness, reflecting the horizon and the sky or the maybe ceiling and then the the ground maybe this is lab equipment or whatever dark stuff is around him that is creating or objects around him creating this dark nebulous shape right through there consider how that disc overlaps onto his hip there and i can drop a shadow Through his shorts here. Putting kind of a reflected horizon through his belt buckle there. The under part of each ab. Now the back of the hand would have more shadow because of the angle of the hand. Because of the light's coming down, it's not gonna hit it, but this here is reflected light coming up right through there. Maybe his forearms casting a shadow onto the, that edge of the cuff. A little shadow where the fingers overlap, each other finger and thumb overlap. Little gray here through the fade, as it fades from black to grayish red to red. A little gray in that lip right there, the lip of that portal. A little gray here at the cheeks. Sometimes you can, I like to come in with a second layer, second coat of the same shade of gray. Oh, and I still have this hand too. Uh, here at the fingers. Still need to add some yellow for that repulsor ray housing. As 
So the bottom sides of each digit in the palm there. And the underside of his forearm here would probably have a little bit more shadow. And cast onto this lip of the cuff. Just like that. Now I want to come in with a slightly darker shade. Some cool That was Cool Gray 4 I was using. Now I'm going to come in with some Cool Gray 5 for some heavier shadows in certain areas. Like here near the armpits, the bottom sides of things, like underneath the chin. Some of the places where there might be a heavier shadow cast. Underneath that part of the hand there, let the hand pop out. Just run it down the back of the hand there a little bit. Inside that uh, overlap of the portal, or the, I mean, hip disc. A little bit here through the horizon, maybe a little underneath the hip disc. Little bottom sides of some of the muscles here. Just a little bit, just to create a little, some chunky shapes. Maybe a little bit up here in the helmet, the top of the head, just for a little nice little contrast. So he's really coming together here. He's really taking shape. I'm just going to leave this open area, this, this part here, just white for really bright shine. Now, what I want to do next, I'm going to pull the camera back just a smidge here so we can see more of the entirety because we want to start working into that background shape. Oh, I was going to fill that in yellow. Let's go ahead and take care of that before I forget it. Take some Y13. And then some Y00. Add a little Y21. Okay, just leave it, leave it at that for now. So next up, background. Now I don't want to fill out the whole thing with background. I just want to kind of create a background element and let Iron Man be the, the star of this image. Like he is the main focus. So what I'm going to do is just create a background shape. You might see this in some of the, the art I post on my social media, some of my convention or studio commission type pieces where I just kind of have a shape that has the background inside of it. So I'm going to do a horizontal rectangle. So I'm just going to pencil it in right now. I'm using my T-square. I have it lined up so I can draw a perfectly 90 degree angled or parallel. It's parallel to the top and bottom of the board here. And then where do I want to cut the bottom? So I'm going to cut it here and I'll explain to y'all why I'm cutting the lines where I am. Hopefully this pencil line is tra translating. So I, I'm cutting the line right where there is a cross, a cross line. And what I mean by cross line is that these horizontal lines don't line up with any other horizontal line. It gets close here. Through the uh, through the knuckles, I had to be. It's cutting just below those, but I would want to be careful that the line doesn't run too close to them. Um, same here. I cut it at the angle where it's cutting right right there. I would not want it to the the line to intersect with that point because that creates this weird tangent where lines meet in like this really unpleasing way. So um, so I don't want it to cut like I don't want lines to intersect like at a corner or at the same direction of line. So since I'm doing horizontal lines, I don't want them to connect or to line up perfectly. So I wouldn't want to draw the line down here. If I had the line coming here, it would line up too much with his elbow, and that is an unappealing design um, approach. You don't want that to happen. That's called a tangent, where the line merges and it, it, it just looks bad. So I, I keep in mind, where do my lines Hit. I want them to cross at, at at the different angle, and also I don't want to I don't want to cut off any joints. 
So, um, like at the at the el at the wrist there, or like at the elbow, or the neck, or at the knee, not at the exact joint. Um, here, I just avoided the elbow here because the elbow is down here, so it's not really cutting off right at the at the joint. Kind of a, a wibbly wobbly way of explaining this. Uh, hopefully, I can find a way to explain it a little better uh, for future. Um, so we'll add my signature in a more official way later. Um, so I'm just kind of doing a light erase here because I don't want really any hard lines for the uh, for this background shape. I want uh, I want it to just be color color and let the real hard lines be um, Iron Man. So um, we have a lot of warm colors here with his red and yellow. Those are very warm colors. We used cool colors for his shadows. So for the background, I'm going to use neutral gray. And I'm going to start with a neutral gray 5 that blends down to like a neutral gray 2. So since I know, sorry, I want to, don't really want to see the pencil line so much, so I erase it to where it's just a faint guideline for me. I take my triangle here, and I take the chisel end of my, my, uh, Copic sketch marker, and I draw in the top part of the, the border line. Keep that neutral 5 handy, and I'm going to fade down to a neutral gray 2. Going to lighten up my guideline here a little bit more, because I really don't want to see much of it. So I can just barely see it. Y'all might not be able to see it at all. Um, but here in the studio, I can barely see it. And now I'm going to run this line all the way across. Now I'm going to bring the color all the way to Iron Man because the color is not so dark. So I'm not going to leave a halo because his halo is the lighting here. So if I bring the gray all the way to there, it's going to make that white highlight pop even more. Oftentimes I like to put a white highlight around or leave a white highlight around the character. This time, not so much. So now I'm going to start filling in the gray. And we're going to have a lot more detail come into this background. This isn't just going to be a fade. Um, but I'm going to start this fade, bringing the sketch marker all the way up next to my line art. I'm going to do four color fade down. So we're starting neutral five, and then we'll go to neutral four, neutral three, then neutral two. Spoiler alert, those are the neutral grays on the way. So I'm just going to start to shade in. I, and I know about how far down I want to make each level of gradation of the fade. So that was the neutral 5. Now we're going to do neutral 4. Coloring over the neutral 5 I'd laid down. So we can a uh, nice smooth transition to neutral 4. Being very careful just to bring that color right next to his lines, his outer contour lines. Using the brush tip to just feather down. Now I'm going to take that from neutral 4 down to neutral 3. Coloring over the neutral four and then down into the white. So it's creating this fade. A little bit of neutral three right there. So I want these inks to blend together. So 
saturate the paper as much as I want there. So neutral three, and now to the neutral two, the same color I used to make this bottom line. This is the bottom of our graphic element rectangle shape. There we go, there's, there's a, a nice color fade. But we're not done. This is just, oops, didn't mean to bump the camera. Sorry, gang. This is just step one. Step one for this background element. Now you can see, bringing the gray right up to his line art, it makes this, this white highlight just pop. Just really, it really pops between the red and the gray. That white highlight, cacao. He is, he is shining. So. Now I want to add some tech. We're gonna put really tech out his lab here. And I've drawn him at an angle, so I want the, the tech lines to be an angle. Even though I've made this, this portal here, this, this, this rectangle, this is just kind of like a framing element that's a window into the, the environment around him, behind him. So I'm going to draw in his background at an angle as well. Because if I drew it up and down, it would be okay, but it would be, it would feel like uh, too, like he's not really existing in the element. It'd almost be just a design behind him. But I want it to look more like it is his, uh, we're seeing uh, into his lab, but we've kind of created this weird reality where we see all of him, but his background, we just have a window into his background behind him, if you will. So kind of keeping in mind the kind of the line of action here is from the, his head, the spine is kind of going this way. So I'm gonna kind of reflect that with the lines here. It's kind of a, an up angle. So I'm using a dark gray art pen here. This is the Arteza Inconic uh, pen. I'm gonna to start to um, draw in some tech here and it's gonna be design elements where I'm gonna have clusters of shapes and lines where there's not, it's uh, not too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I want a, a, a variation, a variation of shapes and clusters of lines. So using my triangle here as my, um, So measuring, uh, lining up with the previous lines I've drawn so I can keep them all on the same angle. And trying to vary the size of the shapes all through here. I don't want everything to be uniform or exact, exactly the same. I want some small shapes next to big shapes. Lots of little lines clustered together and then just just a single solitary line somewhere else. Always considering tangents. I don't want I don't want certain lines to line up perfectly with a line of Iron Man. So this is going to create that reality behind him. So I look at where is the line going to start and stop, and that can help me keep keep me from creating tangents. So I look at the entirety of what what the line would or could or will be before I commit. So I'm just kind of creating a tech background behind him. Maybe get some angled lines through here, so they're not all just vertical and horizontal lines. Well, vertical and horizontal in relation to him, even though technically they're angled on the actual artboard, I'm thinking in the reality he's in. So this is vertical, this is horizontal in relation to Iron Man. So this is would be an angled line. Well, let's tech out the other, oh, let's put a little bit of tech right through here. So 
So just creating these little tiny big and small shapes, I guess I should say. Maybe some vents. of some sort, line up with a previous line that I can slide down to the line slash shape I need to make, create some, some ridges here, kind of breaks up the line, creates some eye candy for the viewer. Line up, slide over. Maybe take this that would be a diagonal in relation to Iron Man. So it's just, uh, I want to create these shapes, shape, shape, shapes. I still have one more trick to do here for these backgrounds. All these lines here, I have another trick I want to do to really, another trick to trick this out. Little things like that. This is um, this becomes like this is like a really fun part of drawing backgrounds for me. I love doing background tech because you can get so creative with it and and just play with the shapes and lines and just kind of noodle out the tech. So we've created a, a fairly subtle background here for him. So Iron Man continues to be the star here of this image. The background's not overpowering him, but it's not invisible either. It's not so subtle that there's like nothing. Actually, let's bring a circle in here. We haven't put a circle in, in this tech yet. So using my circle template, Create a circle, use a slightly larger circle to create a, start to create a ridge. Maybe some little, uh, little tech details around that circle. Let's put a circle over on this side as well. Like drawing lines coming to and from my shapes. Like what is maybe that's like an energy source. So you see like the kind of the it's like um circuitry or whatnots. Who's he what's it's and whatchamacallits.
You can just really kind of play with the shapes and experiment and and uh, have fun with it. Gonna make a little half circle in here. Then maybe put some little studs, rivets in parts of the uh, background here. As few or as many as I want. There's no set rule. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that for now. Now what I want to do is come in with my white gel pen. And for all the dark lines that I've inked in here, I'm going to kind of add a white counterpart. So it's almost like a highlight to the trim. I have to be very careful because the gel pen could smear. So I have to be very careful where I place my drafting tool. So as not to smear the wet ink. And just kind of run it right alongside some of these lines. Vertical and horizontal. And this just kind of tricks out his background a little bit more. It's not too overpowering, but it gives us a little, little extra detail and eye candy. Always keeping in mind that that uh, gel pen is wet ink. If I put the triangle right down on top of it, it could smear and smudge the ink. So I gotta be very cautious. Sometimes I just kind of hover over the thing I need to to add the white highlight to or the white line. Put some little dots in those rivets. Use some little lights inside some of that tech. Just kind of repeating this process all the way through. Don't have to put a white uh, highlight line next to every single line. That's not necessary. But um, but I want to try to maintain a level of consistency. So if I put some over here, I want some over there. You know, I want. Want it to look like I don't want there to be a big gaping hole of no white lines, if that makes sense. And don't rush it. Take your time with it. Just kind of really enjoy the process for what it is. Look at where, where you've put lines previously to where you might put your next line. Try to be as thoughtful with your background as you were with your character, and it will, it will translate to your, your viewer. 
A rushed background does look does look rushed. Skimp on a background, it will look like it's been skimped on. If you give care to your background, like you did your figure, that will translate to your viewer. And you've created a believable environment for your character to live in, and you want your, I, I believe, we want our backgrounds to look as awesome or as close to awesome as the character. And it takes a while to kind of develop a love for drawing backgrounds if you don't have a love for drawing backgrounds. I had to develop a love for drawing backgrounds. As a kid, as a young artist, I didn't like drawing backgrounds. I didn't want to waste my time drawing backgrounds when I could be drawing another character. But when I became a professional comic book artist, I had to, I had to create believable environments, believable realities for the characters to live in. My editor would not let me get away with just skimping on the backgrounds. It's like, that's not what they're paying for. They're paying for figures and backgrounds. got to be a believable world. Now very cautiously with the circle template. Background really brings the figure to life. Totally agree. Exactly. Because you're creating a reality. Whether it's a, a made-up world like the Marvel Universe Or if you're doing a, a life drawing, if you're doing portraiture, or a, a still life, or um, uh, a landscape, you know, that's that's all background there. That that background's going to be key. Now, how much detail to the background or non-detail can vary, but going no background or skimped backgrounds can really can really um, translate to the to the viewer in maybe not the best way. Okay, so I'm, oops, I forgot some vertical lines here that would have looked undone. Just like that. Make sure there's consistency. Oh, let's see. Add a little bit of white line to this uh, this circle section. Just kind of maybe more at the top. Maybe a little bit at the bottom. Like there's some lights that run along the bottom there. Okay, so almost, almost done. And uh, so I'm going to wanna come in here with my uh, white gel pen. I'm just going to add some little tiny highlights here to Iron Man's armor. Like say we have this white chunk here. Just going to add a little bit of a, some little reflective dots here, maybe from the lights above him. Just gives a little bit of extra. I don't want to go too crazy with it. Like right here in this black chunk, just kind of break it up just a little bit. Maybe right here on the shoulder. Just kind of going right from whatever the highlight is that I left around him, putting a little white dot there. I want to be careful not to go too crazy with it where he looks polka dot. But just kind of on the upper portions of anything closest to the light source. is kind of the rule of thumb I'm going with. Kind of cutting it into the color there. Just a little bit. Don't have to do every single section. Right here next to this big highlight.
a little bit here in the thighs, just a little bit. Maybe in the under portion reflected area. Just a bit. Maybe one right there. Just kind of breaks it up a little bit. Okay, and I have another trick I want to do. Just remembered this was a trick I'd planned on doing. So I have this banded metal here. Sometimes it's fun to put a little white ridge. So I'm using now the Jelly Roll white gel pen. It's a thinner line that I'll get from my Uniball Signo gel pen, which I was using just a moment ago. And I pull that little line right across there. Bring this up closer. So those little lines there create some depth, create some, some detail and ridge. I'm gonna reflect that through all the banded metal on him. So it's his neck, his underpants, or outer pants, <laughs> guess they're not really under anything, uh, overpants, and then uh, on the banded metal of his gloves here. It's very challenging because there's some very, very tight, small shapes. So I'm going to be very cautious in how I do that. In fact, let me zoom in the camera here so you can see more of the, the detail. They sell Jelly Roll pens in different nibs and tip sizes. Oh, that's great to know. I'm going to, have to look some of those up. Love getting new art supplies and experimenting with new tools. So I'm going to have to see if I can find some of those. Probably just go on Amazon, see, see what they might have. Right now, the, the thinner the tip size, the better for this teeny tiny detail work. Not doing the whole, the whole back of the hand rip, uh, banded metal. Just kind of pulling more from the, the outer part and around. Same for the forearm. Let's come and tackle this hand here. This hand's more in the foreground, so we and all the fingers are extended, so we have even more lines to detail. Pretty much all the way around the finger. Oops, so sorry. To go from one white side to the other white side. Following around the black line there. Not over the black line necessarily, just kind of right up to it as much as possible. Oops. Sorry, I keep getting out of camera shot. Nice thin little line. It's like a happy little tree. It's a thin little line. Nice thin little lines. Curving around the palm, curving around the fingers. Let's curve it around the forearms now. Don't have to go all the way around if, I, if we don't want to. You can if you want to. I'm just going to mostly pull from the, the light and into the shadow area. So it kind of breaks things up. And then here for his shorts. Now I drew these in with a, or I inked these in with a French curve. I'm going to bring my French curve back, find the angle I use to line it up. Just pull that line all the way around. Well, not all the way around, but most of the way around. Especially coming out of that white. Like that white section continues into these banded metal lines.
just like that. And it gives him some, uh, gives his armor just a little more detail there. Now what I can do is take my, my micron here and I can sign it. And then today's date that we finished this on is May the 7th. That's right. So 07 May 2020. Let's pull the camera back so you can see it in its entirety. A little bit of an angle, but you get the idea. Kind of getting some foreshortening here. I can move the camera to where it's looking straight down on it so you can get a better actual angle. And that's the finished Iron Man on an Invincible Iron Man 600 cover. I chose this classic era uh, Iron Man armor to kind of match the classic logo here that they used back in the, I think it was back in the 70s, most likely. So um, I wasn't reading comic books at that time. Um, I'm an 80s kid, so I didn't start reading comics till the 80s. But, uh, but there we go. Let's flip the camera around and we can wrap up today's uh, art live stream. Hey gang, let me clip into the rig here. There we go. Awesome. Gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Um, and uh, it's been a fun three days. It's always fun to do these fuller figure pieces because there's so much to detail that we can put in here and playing with uh, the figure, the backgrounds, the colors. The lines, it's a lot, a lot of fun, and I hope you had fun too. Whether you're drawing along or just watching, I appreciate your support. Thanks for all the comments and questions. So sorry I couldn't really address many of those this go around because I was so focused on the colors and the backgrounds and the details here uh, and kind of cluing you in on, as to my approach there. So hopefully you got some good instruction. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. And if you just watched for fun, Totally cool. I, like I said, I appreciate y'all's support. I appreciate y'all being here. Um, if you've just discovered my channel, please subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button, tap the bell to alert you for when I schedule new art live streams. Uh, I plan to do a new live art stream tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, 4 p.m. Greenwich time if you're watching internationally. And uh, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. If you know someone who's an Iron Man fan or a marker art fan, Please share my video with them. Please share my videos. You're more than welcome to share them on your Twitter, on your Facebook. Share it. Just click the share button and share it with uh, people you might uh, know that might be interested in seeing this stuff here. And um, and if you're watching on replay, f feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll have a shot of this on my Instagram and Twitter and Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. All my social media links are listed in the video description below, as well as I should have a direct link to this shot in the video description coming soon. So uh, gang, thanks so much for hanging out. I hope you have a great Thursday and I'll see you uh, tomorrow morning here on Friday, May 8th. I'll see you then. So till then, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing, keep having fun.